first of all, I want to detach the head from the stick. Because when you're turbo smoothing, separating objects is really smart. Because it means that you're going to get less edge loops in places that you don't want. So I'm going to select this part of the axe. The killing part of the axe, basically. I'm going to go into perspective view here, see that we get everything. Yeah, that's looking good. And we're going to click on Grow once. And what this does is that it selects the polygon next to the polygons you already selected. So as you can see, it selects this ring here. And I'm going to go over to the menu here and click on Detach. And name it Axe Head. What this does is that makes an object from the selection and removes it from the object you already had selected. So if we hide this selection now, as you can see we only have the axe head. Now there are no polygons in the middle here, so I'm going to select the border tool, which works as edge tool, only it selects holes in your mesh, which this is a hole in the mesh. We're going to select both the borders and we're going to hit bridge. What this does is it just creates polygons between the two edges that you've selected. Now that we've done that, we want to add some... I wanna, I'm going to change the design of the axe a little bit, because I, I feel it's a little too boring. And uh, so we're just going to do a simple sort of scale this out, like so. Oops. Never rotate the 2D view unless you want to go into orthographic mode or view. Yeah, and you just get these artifacts right here. That's that's an easy fix when you put on the turbo smooth. You won't see that when the turbo smoothing is on. It just happens because it's only one polygon getting sort of twisted. But you can fix it right away by pulling out these. Uh, these uh, vertices right here. So we're going to do that on both sides. Uh, like so. Like I said, I'm not going to be picking too much on this because I don't have I don't really have time for that. I, I advise you to pick a lot more. Be picky. That's a good thing in 3D modeling. Be picky. <laughs> Be too picky, like <laughs> does it for a year. I'll, I'll not go into production. So I want to make this axe uh, a little bit more spiky. I want a bigger axe. You know, I want it to come up right here, and uh, let's ring this and connect it. One's down the middle, yes, that is great. And sort of uh, curve this out, this part out a bit. Curving it out. I guess something I left for last time. That's good, that looks better. And now I'm being picky, I said I wouldn't do it, but you know, I, I just can't, can't control myself when it comes to that part of modeling. I always try to make things look the way I like it, even if I'm making a tutorial. Now I want this part to be thicker and I want a sort of curved blade so it cleaves to the, to the uh, target of the axe. So uh, what do we do then? Well we oops, go back into selection, close this out selection, and we're gonna select the polygons that we want to sort of uh, increase in size. Go back into the perspective view to see that we have selected everything that we want. Yes, we're just going to go into the scale tool and just 
scale it up so it gets fatter like so great and then we're going to not select by name ring and connect and sort of want this a little higher up there awesome go to the scale tool scale it sort of together and then chamfer it nope don't move that chamfer it like so you probably only need one I'm not quite sure yeah I'm gonna go with one could go with two there to get a, a, a some sort of a sharper cornered by I like it the way it is now I'm starting to like the design a little bit more. There's a little bit more, you know, difference to it. It's not all square, boxy. Although this is going to be a very boxy model. It's just the way it is. Now, straight out of the box, I'm going to show you again what turbo smoothing does. And you're going to be weirded out by this because it's not going to look like the model you've modeled. Oh, this one held up pretty well. But as you can see, it's all washed out. The corners are all soft. Looks like a toy, really. So what we need to do is sharpen out these edges to make it um, more of a... Well, this edge is really sharp because I have a lot of edges going down the middle. And yeah, we're going to sharpen out the edges. Go back into editable poly mode. And uh, we're going to start with uh, this edge up here. We're going to ring and click connect. And then we're going to uh, slide it sort of out towards the edge. The sharper the edge you want it, the closer you want it to the edge. So I want it like 57, that's that's good. Do the same on this side. Yeah, that's good. And uh, do sort of an uh, inner connect here. Here we can uh, take away the slide and add another segment and just pinch them out like so. Great, and we could do that here as well. Just pinch them out, like so. And uh, we want this part to be kind of sharp. Let's use just one here and slide it towards the edge. Great. Now let's see what that looks like. Oh, uh, go to ice line display. Yeah, you know, it's starting to look a little better. You can see this artifact right here. This is just because there's a two, two edges going down right here. You can fix that later. I'm, I'm probably not going to do that in this tutorial. Just because of the time. And uh, what didn't we like? Well, we didn't like this part here. This is too curving in. See that? large one there I don't want that so what I do then is that I ring right here and I connect it and I slide it down towards the edge and I do the same here ring and connect sort of slide it down towards the edge yeah that's better that's better and uh, we want this back part to be uh, a little stiffer, a little sharper. Oh, what am I doing? There you go. If you can always zoom in, it's, uh, if you can't see what's going on, yeah, that's good. Accept that. Look around the model, see if you see anything that needs some instant changing. No, it's looking good. This part, it's looking better. I'm gonna leave that like that for now. We might come back later. But not now. In fact, I'm going to sharpen this part up right away. To make that edge a little bit, a little bit cleaner. That's all I wanted. So let's uh, go on to the middle section. Now I think I'm, I'm not, I don't think I'm done modeling it. I, I think I want some, 
I don't know, like a gem in the middle here or, or, or something like that. So I'm just going to hit inset to uh, get sort of a beveled in. And then I'm going to bevel it out a little bit more than that. And I'm going to give it a slight inset. Good. And uh we inset it again, we could inset it again. Yeah, let's inset it again, why not? You know? Uh it's always fun to see what happens. Get this sort of curve down sometimes. No, I don't care because I'm gonna place a gem on top of here. I might not do that in this tutorial though, be aware. But uh if you really wanna see how I make a gem you can always uh, sh shout me out in the comments and uh, say, yeah, yeah, I want a gem. So you see that that's a. Uh, it turns out round, and I don't want it to be round. I want it to be sharp, like the like the uh, this model. So uh, the way we do that is just we just oh, we just sharpen up the edges that we want, ring it and connect it. Seventy-five looks nice. Give it a little closer. And I'm not minding this at all. What's in the middle? I don't really care. Because uh, you won't see that when a giant gem is covering it, and uh, you know, I should probably have mirrored the um, value, but I couldn't remember because I didn't watch it. So whatever. So there we go. Now we get sort of a sharper edge going on right there, which I'm starting to like. And uh, I want this to be sort of sharpened, so we're gonna ring it and connect it. And I'm designing all this on the fly. It's it's not like last time where I've already designed the uh, the model. This this sort of it's more spontaneous. I feel, <laughs> and you get to see my flaws more. You know, design flaws. If I go back, if I don't like anything, I'm probably not gonna do that much. If I like don't like anything in in, in this one. But as you can see with the new support edges, it's it's kind of stiff, and that's what I want. want. I want it to look like it was cast in iron, you know? It's an iron cast kind of thing. And, uh, well, this was a little soft, so I'm going to ring that and I'm going to connect it twice. Get support edges right in there. And the inside, ring that. And what you're going to see here. When I connect it, is that I'm going to add three to get a center edge. So the two at the edge and the one at the center to support uh, the two at the edge, <laughs> basically. We're like, oh well, you haven't done it under. Well, I'm going to mirror it, so don't worry about that. It's going to be a sym symmetry modifier on it. Now I don't like. I'm not. Well, I'm not sure if I like it if it's curved right there. I think I'm going to leave it curved like there for a while and uh, come back to it see if I like the curve later on